Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mount Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video compares using the old school approach with StatCrunch when finding critical value t scores. Let's get started. So, to help us understand the difference between the old school method and using StatCrunch for finding our critical value t scores, we're going to look at an example problem involving garlic and cholesterol. It's been commonly claimed that garlic lowers cholesterol levels. And so to test this out, 49 subjects were treated with doses of raw garlic. Their cholesterol levels were measured before and after the treatment. And then the changes in their levels of LDL cholesterol have a mean of 0.4 and a standard deviation of 21. The Organizers of the study were looking at LDL cholesterol levels because, you know, that's the quote-unquote bad cholesterol that's been associated with, you know, heart disease, and diabetes, and a host of other uh, health conditions. So with the sample statistics that they provided, we're asked to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean net change in LDL cholesterol after the garlic treatment. What does the confidence interval suggest about the effectiveness of garlic in reducing LDL cholesterol? We get to answer that question after we construct the confidence interval. So if we use the old school approach to get our critical value, then we need to, to calculate the margin of error, that we need to calculate the critical, excuse me, the confidence interval. We're going to use a t-table, and the t-table works in much the same way as the z-table did. So the main difference here is that we're looking at degrees of freedom. So instead of a partial z-score that we see there on the left side of the table, what we see here with the t-table are degrees of freedom. We want a 95% confidence interval, so that means our significance level alpha is 5%. These are the values that you see for the column headings at the top of the table. These are alpha levels because it says tail probability. That's the area inside the tail is that significance level alpha. So our critical value of T alpha over two implies we need a two-tailed area that's equal to alpha. So half of alpha is going to be on the right, half of it's going to be on the left. Now there's two types of column headings you can see with the T-table. You can have uh, a one-tailed area heading and you can have a two-tailed area heading. Sometimes both will be listed. Generally when only one is listed and there's nothing to identify which it is, it's pretty safe to assume as you're looking at a one-tailed area. So if we had a two-tailed column heading we'd be looking for 0 0.05. But we don't have that. We have a one-tailed column heading and so that's going to be half of alpha, which is 0 0.025. So I look for 0 0.025. There's the column for 0 0.025. And so now I need to just figure out which row I'm going to be using. And in our example, we've got a sample size of 49. So that means we have 48 degrees of freedom. So if you go down and you look at the list, 48 is not actually listed. So that means we can interpolate Okay, between 40 and 50 to get the 48 that we need. A little messy algebra, but it comes out with a t-score of 2.011. Alternatively, because 48 is not that far from 50, we could also just use the value there for 50 degrees of freedom as an approximation. So if we did that, we'd be taking this row here, and of course where the row and the column intersect, that's going to give us our critical value t-score, which in this case would be 2.009. This is the approximated value. Of course, the more exacting value comes from the interpolation, which is 2.011. We can also use StatCrunch to get our critical value t-score. So this is way easier than using the t-table. Let me show you how this is done. Check this out. StatCrunch, I'm going to show you how to get your critical value t-scores 
inside stat crunch. To do that, I'm going to get the T calculator out. So I'm going to go stat calculators T. And here's my T calculator. Remember our degrees of freedom that we saw earlier is 48. And then up here I'm going to hit the between section because remember we're looking for T alpha over 2. So we're split between two tails. The area in between the two tails is my confidence level, which of course we saw was 95%. Put that in, hit compute, and there's the 2.011 that we were seeing earlier from the interpolated value. If I wanted to just go along with the estimate, I can get the same value that's in the table. Just change that to 50%. Again, put in the 95% confidence level. And out comes the 2.009 that we saw earlier. So this is way easier than a table and certainly way easier than interpolating. So I'm definitely a fan of the 21st century and using technology and software programs like StackCrunch. So hope that helps you. Okay, so back to our, our uh, garlic problem. We're looking for a confidence level. We've got the critical value that we need. Now we can calculate our margin of error. So here's our margin of error calculation. If we use that estimated critical value of 2.009, our margin of error is 6.027. If instead we use that more exacting value from the interpolation or stack crunch, 2.011, it makes a slight difference in our margin of error, 6.033. Because our sample mean is our point estimate, we're, we can now, that's going to be the center of our confidence level, or excuse me, our confidence interval. And so now we have everything we need to construct our CI. So here's the general form. We take that 0.4, which is our sample mean, and we're going to add and subtract the 6.027, which is our margin of error, and out comes a confidence interval of negative 5.627 to 6.427. Some students look at this and they get a little excited about the negative sign there on the lower limit, wondering if they did something wrong. And no, we didn't do anything wrong. That's just where the confidence interval lies. If we use that interpolated more exact value for our CI, we get negative 5.633 to 6.433. So again, a slight minor difference. You can see that if you're not going out that far with the decimal point, that for all practical purposes, that approximated value does pretty well on its own. So we're just going to say this is our 95% confidence interval estimate. So we're 95% confident that these limits actually do contain the value of our population mean, which is the mean of the changes for the LDL cholesterol for the population. So looking at this, it could go down, it could go up, it could stay the same. So the key thing to look at is, is zero a member of this confidence interval? Because zero is found inside the confidence interval, it's very possible that zero is the actual value. And so if it's zero, that means there's no change in the LDL levels because of the garlic. So then we have to conclude that the garlic treatment uh, is not that effective in lowering uh, the LDL cholesterol level. If zero were outside the confidence interval, then we'd have to look and see which side it was on to see if it's raising or lowering the confidence the, 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 the cholesterol level. But that's not the case here. Zero is inside, therefore the value could be zero. Therefore, we have to say there's it's likely no change, and therefore it's no not effective in lowering LDL cholesterol levels. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.